All right, hi, my name is Dan Abramson. I am the uh, Senior Vice President and Head of Revenue at Four Kites. Um, and I'm responsible for uh, the strategy, the revenue, and the customer success of the Four Kites organization. And hi, I'm Mike Daniels. I'm Senior Director of International Solutions here at Four Kites. And my responsibility includes uh, being that you know, subject matter expert that the various teams can rely on and uh, that um, can relate to what our customers' needs are. Mike, really wanted to open up uh, with the discussion around uh, the global supply chain and this concept uh, that we've heard a lot about, uh, resilience. And, you know, I think over the past 12 months or so, this concept of resiliency has really shifted to this concept of anti uh, fragile supply chains and the ability to do more with less, um, the ability to manage constraints, um, but really how do companies capitalize, um, you know, on uh, some of these uh, dramatic and impactful moments across the global supply chain. So um, when you think about that, uh, what are you seeing from shippers uh, in their ability to do more with less? So Dan, that's an excellent question. What I'm sensing from shippers is their ability to keep up with the disruptions, their ability to then pivot or um, have a plan on what to do as a contingency um, are the themes that are coming up um, again and again, especially within the last 12 months. We've had so many different disruptions in so many parts of the world that when you have a global supply chain, it's almost like everywhere you turn, there's another uh, roadblock or another disruption. So their staff are having to keep up with all of these. And unfortunately, you can't have enough customer service reps or enough staff to watch every shipment every moment. So what you really want is exception management. You want the ability to go and not have to worry about the 100 shipments, but really look at the five shipments that were going to require action. So to be able to do that with a dashboard where it's showing you, hey, you know, this is what you should be paying attention to today, or to have even better a um, AI powered uh, solution that allows you to ask a simple question and get a result that says, hey, these are the five shipments that are impacted by um, uh, the Red Sea crisis, and that now you are so much more efficient in the use of your staff that those other 95 shipments would just be a waste of time to look at, you know, at a, a daily basis. Yeah, that's great. I mean, to, to build on that. So basically what you're saying, uh, Mike, is, you know, that command center, right? That, that supply chain command center, that gives you the opportunity to really look at your exceptions, uh, manage those exceptions, but the rest of the supply chain can go into that drive state, right? The ability to, you know, self-heal, self-correct, um, empower all different personas across the supply chain to make better decisions. Um, how about with uh, some of the stuff that's going on uh, from a from a rail standpoint in Canada? Can you kind of drill down into you know what a dashboard or what a system that is able to ingest that type of data um, and, and and really kind of make decisions based on the the, the situation that's happening? Um, can can you talk a little bit about kind of how that would impact decision making capabilities and? Uh, you know, a shipper's supply chain? Of course. Um, I think that the first and foremost, uh, it's determining what shipments are impacted, right? You want to know that subset of shipments that is going to be inbound from Asia uh, to Canada that might actually ultimately end up in the U.S. Midwest, right? So to be able to flag those shipments uh, is super important. Um, to be able to then look at, has the ETA changed for those shipments? Uh, has, you know, the uh, container, you know, stopped in the port uh, and you know is it now not moving um, you know is it going to start uh, incurring demurrage is another you know example of something you want to be on top of right so to have a dashboard that lets you know you know this container has been sitting this container is approaching demurrage this container uh, its ETA is now you know two weeks further out um, allows you to then take action 
right? Whether that's looking at another mode of transport outside of rail, you know, can I get a trucker to pick up this container and then actually take it to the, uh, the intended destination? Um, again, can I get the container out of the port before it occurs to merge? Um, even if it's at another holding uh, facility, you don't have these options if you're not aware that these impacts are actually happening for your shipments. So actionable data is super important when we have a crisis such as disruptions um, in Canada. Great, great answer there. Can you touch on a little bit um, of the business or financial impact of being able to make those proactive decisions or risk mitigation capabilities can have uh, to a shipper's business? Absolutely. As I was talking about, potentially in marriage, uh, can be, you know, a substantial cost that you were not factoring in uh, to the pricing for that shipment end to end, right? The landed cost of that shipment. So, of course, you want to reduce those charges or the potential for those charges as much as possible. So, you know, those are charges that basically just come on top and then affect your profitability or your customer satisfaction or both, right? So, really, that is one of the top uh, customer, you know, um, concerns that I'm hearing is how do we, in those situations, avoid, you know, penalties or avoid uh, detention to demerge charges. Then there is the, well, I'm going to have a stock out if these goods are not going to end up at my facility or on my store shelves. Um, so you really have to look at this as the ability to then take action in order to say, is there another mode of transport that I can leverage? in order to avoid having to air freight or avoid having, you know, to uh, to wait until those products actually and get a destination, which could be weeks later. Got it. So it sounds like maybe at the, the sea level, um, a couple of metrics around, you know, margin impacts and, and, and improving or protecting your, your margins. Um, and then also there's a customer service and service aspect um, to that. Correct. So Mike, when we go back to the global supply chain view and we think about a classic uh, supply chain flow from plan to source, to procure, to make, to service. Um, and we think about the different personas that operate across that end-to-end -end supply chain. One of the things that's really interesting is the impact that uh, shipment, not just shipments have, but orders have on the ability um, to be uh, better at, at risk mitigation, um, to be uh, a, a better partner and provide better customer service and delight you know, our, our customers, whether it's in a B2B setting or a B2, B2C setting. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of uh, orders uh, in order visibility uh, as it relates to a, a multimodal type shipment process? Absolutely. Great question, Dan. So what I'm sensing from customers is their transportation departments are the ones who are talking shipments. They're the ones who are talking, you know, <clears throat> carrier bookings and, and uh, container numbers. The rest of the company, the other 95% of the company is working with sales orders and purchase orders, right? So to be able to have an actual data that goes beyond the transportation department, you really have to go and talk orders, right? And make sure that in the system itself, those additional uh, personas can relate to, you know, um, where is my order? Where are my SKUs, right? So this, you know, goes from just being valuable to a subset of the company to now being valuable to the entire company because now I can go and say, even before the shipment's created, I can start to look at a purchase order. And now is that, you know, transportation for that purchase order, you know, been procured either by your own team or by a third party, right? So if there is a ship by date that is intended that that's coming, you know, up very soon, um, you have the ability to take action before it's missed and before, you know, it becomes then a uh, situation where you might have to consider a higher cost uh, mode of transport such as Aaron. All right, Mike, um, you know, another really interesting topic that's, uh, you know, on on all the, the board level, C-level uh, uh, talk tracks, you hear it on as a top topic on uh, earnings calls is AI, artificial intelligence, generative AI, large language models, uh, throw in your favorite buzzword, 
but you know, at the end of the day, um, for for me, the most important piece about AI, you know, is the application of it, um, is the ability to uh, drive insight and decision making from it, um, and also the trust and integrity behind uh, the information that we're acting on. Um, as it relates to kind of ocean and the supply chain um, from an ocean standpoint, what kind of uh, uh, new developments or capabilities uh, are you seeing from an AI standpoint uh, across the ocean landscape? Dan, where I see the application of AI in a very practical um, use case would be when it comes to all of the disruptions we've seen over the last, you know, say 12 months or so. So really, you know, no matter where you turn, there is a disruption somewhere on the um, on the ocean, uh, whether that's the Red Sea crisis, whether that's the Panama Canal restrictions, whether that's you know looming strikes, um, you know, in certain geographies. There's really a need to be able to very quickly identify what shipments that I have as a customer are going to be impacted or what may possibly be impacted by these disruptions. So the ability to not have to go and filter and try to you know, pick out each one of these particular shipments on my own where you, you, know, you have the chance to miss you know, certain ones. The ability to be able to go you know, to one place and in very plain language ask for which shipments do I have that are going to be disrupted uh, by the Red Sea crisis. And then to get that data set back so that you can start to you know, take action and be confident that you didn't miss something along the way, um, you know, in terms of a particular shipment that you didn't think would be impacted, um, is pretty powerful. So it's highly efficient, uh, and then from a customer standpoint, you, know, you are now able to, you know, with confidence, um, then take action on that subset versus have to go and try to figure out you know, what the situation is uh, across the board. Yeah, I mean, the, the ability to ask questions in real time and get that dynamic information back and put in the hands of a supply chain team member seems extremely powerful. It is, it is. But outside of ocean, Dan, where do you see the application of AI, say, across the broader supply chain? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm on the road pretty frequently meeting across, uh, you know, meeting with uh, various shippers uh, in, in various industries. Uh, and when it comes to the supply chain space, I think you know it's extremely exciting uh, the the technology uh, and the the, the AI um, uh, capabilities that that we're seeing. For me, uh, the the components of uh, a successful uh, AI strategy across the supply chain first starts at a very foundational level, um, and that that's data um, and the quality of that data. Um, and relentlessly, relentlessly pursuing uh, a, a data quality strategy. Um, when we build these large language models, when you de uh, deploy uh, real-time uh, decision-making capabilities, uh, the data that it's trained and built on uh, is extremely important. So that foundational uh, element of, of data is critical. Um, then in the middle, you need a, a, a platform and a capability that gives you the opportunity to uh, develop those models um, train those models, um, and then also uh, deploy those models into your uh, production system. And then finally, um, the most important aspect, I think, from an AI standpoint is, you know, not doing AI to do AI. It's what kind of decision-making uh, improvements are you going to make? And how do we empower uh, the resources across the organization with the right data, with the right artificial intelligence, to improve the outcomes uh, of the business um, that they're trying to improve. Um, so those three elements are just hypercritical to, to any AI strategy across the supply chain. Uh, Dan, you're out on the road, uh, visiting customers, visiting prospects. What opportunities are you sensing are the most important, say, uh, you know, to implement now, between now and the end? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, I've been on uh, the road quite a bit recently, uh, meeting with customers in the uh, LSP space, uh, retail, uh, food and beverage, uh, and manufacturing industries. And I think one of the biggest things that we're seeing is that um, you know shippers are really still trying to get a good balance and a good handle on their inventory strategy. Um, 
I think the biggest thing and you know during COVID and shifting out of COVID has been you know how do we manage inventory effectively um, how do we prevent uh, stockouts but how do we also right size inventory and so I think really trying to get that equation uh, just right um, seems to be a really important area of focus uh, for shippers over the next six months. The other thing that's that's been quite interesting is, you know, when we look across the supply chain, um, you know, a lot of the, the functions have been disrupted with technology. Um, but one of the things that I'm really excited about is the opportunity and the transcendent nature of what uh, what some of the innovations look like in the yard and facility management space. I think it's one of the uh, one of the untouched areas uh, across an organization that's really ripe for uh, digital transformation and technology improvements. So whether that be um, various camera systems, whether that be more automation at the gate, whether that be autonomous trucks and vehicles within the facility and yard itself, um, I, I truly believe that there are a lot of benefits and a lot of value to be unlocked on that part of the business. And, you know, that's very relevant across retail, food and beverage, uh, manufacturing, uh, CPG customers as well. So really excited to kind of see what that looks like over the next six to 12 months. I think you'll see a lot of innovation, a lot of acceleration and adoption of technology. Um, and I know I'm, I'm excited and I know Fort Kites is excited as well about that.